Today we're talking about neural plasticity, which is this incredible feature of our nervous systems that allows it to change in response to experience. Neural plasticity is arguably one of the most important aspects of our biology. It holds the promise for each and all of us to think differently, to learn new things, to forget painful experiences, and to essentially adapt to anything that life brings us by becoming better. And there are a lot of reasons why the nervous system would do this. It could do it in response to some traumatic event. It could, for instance, create a sense of fear around a particular place or a fear of automobiles or planes. It could also occur when something positive happens, like the birth of our first child, or when our puppy does something amusing, or we see an incredible feat of performance in athleticism. All of us were born with a nervous system that isn't just capable of change, but was designed to change. When we enter the world, our nervous system is primed for learning. The brain and nervous system of a baby is wired very crudely. The connections are not precise. And we can see evidence of that in the fact that babies are kind of flopping there like a, a little potato bug with limbs. They can't really do much in terms of coordinated movement. They certainly can't speak. And they can't really do anything with precision. And that's because we come into this world overconnected. We have essentially wires. Those wires have names like axons and dendrites. Those are the different parts of the neurons discussed in episode one. But those little parts and those wires and connections are everywhere. Imagine a bunch of roads that are all connected to one another in kind of a mess, but there are no highways. They're all just small roads. That's essentially what the young nervous system is like. And then as we mature, as we go from day one of life to 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old, what happens is particular connections get reinforced and stronger and other connections are lost. So that's the first important principle that I want everyone to understand, which is that developmental plasticity, the neuroplasticity that occurs from the time you're born until about age 25 is mainly a process of removing connections that don't serve our goals well. And of course, certain events happen during that birth to 25 period in which positive events and negative events are really stamped down into our nervous system in a very dramatic fashion by what we call one trial learning. We experience something once and then our nervous system is forever changed by that experience. But when you were brought into this world, you were essentially a widely connected web of connections that was really poor at doing any one thing. And that through your experience, what you were exposed to by your parents or other caretakers, through your social interactions, through your thoughts, through the languages that you learn, through the places you traveled or didn't travel, your nervous system became customized to your unique experience. What this tells us is that the young brain is a plasticity machine. Then right about age 25, plus or minus a year or two, everything changes. After age 25 or so, in order to get changes in our nervous system, we have to engage in a completely different set of processes in order to get those changes to occur and for them, more importantly, to stick around. People always talk about fire together, wire together. Fire together, wire together is true. It is the statement of my colleague at Stanford, Carla Schatz, and it's an absolute truth about the way that the nervous system wires up early in development. But fire together, wire together doesn't apply in the same way after age 25. Uh, the greatest neurobiologist of all time, Ramoni Cajal, I think it goes something like, you know, should somebody wish to change their nervous system, they could be the uh, sculptor of their nervous system in any way they want, something like that. And that sounds great. I mean, who wouldn't want to change their nervous system any way they want? But what's lost in those statements is how to actually accomplish that. And we're going to cover that today. Now, the Newton Lab did two very important sets of experiments. The first one was published in Nature, a very important study, which showed that young individuals can shift their representations of the world so that they learn to reach to the correct location. They get a lot of plasticity. In adults, it tends to be very slow, and most individuals never actually accomplish the full 
map shift. They don't get the plasticity. And I, here we're talking about map shifts, but this could be um, learning a new language. This could be any number of different things that one were attempting. So what we're saying is what I always said before, which is that we learn very well as youngsters, but not as adults after 25. But then what they did is they started making the increment of change smaller. So instead of shifting the, the world a huge amount by putting prisms that shifted the, the visual world of, you know, all the way over to the right, they did this incrementally. So that first they put on prisms that shifted it just a little bit, you know, and just like seven degrees, I believe was the exact number. And then it was 14 degrees and then it was 28 degrees. And so what they found was that the adult nervous system can tolerate smaller and smaller errors over time, but that you can stack those errors so that you can get a lot of plasticity. Put simply, incremental learning as an adult is absolutely essential. You are not going to get massive shifts in your representation of the outside world. So how do you make small errors as opposed to big errors? Well, the key is smaller bouts of focused learning for smaller bits of information. It's a mistake to try and learn a lot of information in one learning bout as an adult, is that the adult nervous system is fully capable of engaging in a huge amount of plasticity, but you need to do it in smaller increments per learning epoch or per learning episode. So let's say I wanted to learn free throws. I'm 45 years old, so I'm well past the you know 25 and under mark. I don't necessarily have to be paying attention to you know exactly what um, you know the contact of my fingers with the ball or some random feature like whether or not I'm bending my knees or not. The key is to try a number of different parameters until I start to approximate the behavior that I want to get a little bit better, and then trying to get consistent about that by isolating the errors and making a, a number of errors in a particular aspect of the motor movement, it signals to the brain that it's plastic. The key thing is to not start adding a variety of new errors because then it gets confused. And so this is why short learning bouts are absolutely essential. There is one way to get a lot of plasticity all at once as an adult. And the Knudsen lab revealed this by setting a very serious contingency on the learning. What they did was they had a situation where subjects had to find food. What they found was that if people have to adjust their visual world in order to get food, the plasticity would eventually occur, but it was very slow as an adult. It was very, very slow. Unless they actually had to hunt that food. They actually, if they, in order to eat at all, they needed plasticity. And then what happened was remarkable what they observe is that the plasticity as an adult can be as dramatic, as robust as it is in a young person, provided that there's a serious incentive for the plasticity to occur. And this is absolutely important to understand, which is that how badly we need or want the plasticity determines how fast that plasticity will arrive. This means that the importance of something, how important something is to us, actually gates the rate of plasticity and the magnitude of plasticity. And this is why just passively going through most things, going through the motions, as we say, or just getting our reps in, quote unquote, is not sufficient to get the nervous system to change. We actually have to accomplish something in order to eat or in order to get our ration of uh, income we will reshape our nervous system very, very quickly. And for most people who are trying to learn how to learn faster or learn better, they probably, in most cases, they are hitting a limit because the need to change is not crucial enough. But from an internal standpoint, from their own belief and desire to change, that massive change is possible. And so I think that the studies that Knudsen did showing that incremental learning can create a huge degree of plasticity as an adult, as well as when the contingency is very high, that plasticity can happen in these enormous leaps, just like they can in adolescence and young adulthood. 